Good evening, my folks. I hope that all is well and hope that you're continuing to be safe and trusting in God through this ordeal. Just just a word to talk to you tonight, just a little bit. Um, but before we get into that, let's, let's say a word of prayer. Dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for being so good to us, thanking you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for watching over us, putting a hedge of protection around us. Father, by faith tonight, we we believe um, in your word and we will stand on your word. We will trust you tonight. Father, I continue to ask that you bless all of those who we are dutied and bound to pray for, those who are in bereavement, those who are sick, those who are going through. Father, you're still in control and we trust you today. These and other blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you tonight. Um, about the the ongoing coronavirus and and there's so many myths and things especially in the religious community or the Christian community about this coronavirus and I just want to read a passage of scripture um, from Matthew the fifth chapter beginning at that um, 44th verse and it reads Jesus says but I say unto you Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the Son, he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Amen. And we want to talk to you tonight about why, why this coronavirus is here. Why is this coronavirus here? I, I've heard in the Christian community, especially a lot of Christians will say that have said that this coronavirus is an attack or a trick of the enemy, or I've heard some say that God is punishing sinners with this virus and he's straightening things out. But, but, but I, I, I don't see God doing this. I, I, what I see God saying is, is he asked, he's asking a question tonight. He said, even if, if you get sick, even if, if a loved one dies, even if you lose your job or lose your car or your home, even if you have to get assistance to make it, will you still trust me? And and when we look at this, we, we see that some of us can't go to work because of this thing and we're not getting paid and we have to get government assistance and we have to be on unemployment. And God is asking tonight, Will you still trust me in this? Now, speaking of this pandemic, a lot of folks wondering why is this happening? And you're trying to put a, a spiritual aspect on this. But this this coronavirus is just a part of, of this world. It's a part of life. We, we may not be of the world, but we're still living in the world. We still live on this earth and we are subject to to anything that will happen or that can happen to anybody else. Us being saved and being spiritual cannot separate us from sickness or pestilence that can happen to anybody else. Let me say this again. Us being saved or spiritual does not exempt us from being sick with the things of this world. Yes, I know that there are certain things if we practice um, living any old kind of way, yes, it can come, but things such as this pandemic can come upon us and it's not, it's not about you being saved or unsaved, but it's about how you are trying to be safe in this world, but we can be affected, affected. And I want you to know tonight that this, this pandemic is not, is, it's new to our generation, but it's not new to the world. There have been many 
pandemics before this. There have been many episodes of things like this that have happened before this right here. For example, even as early as, as recorded um, 165 AD, there was something called the Antonine Plague, which killed 5 million people. In, seven, in 735, 737 AD, there was a Japanese smallpox epidemic that killed a million people. In 541 and 542 AD, there was a plague of Justinian, which killed between 30 and 50 million people. In Europe, in, in 1347 to 1351, in four years, the Black Death or the bubonic plague came through and killed over 200 million people in four years. In 1520, the New World smallpox outbreak, it killed, it started killing upward to 56 million people. People in 1885, there was a third plague that killed 12 million people. The yellow fever in the late 1800s killed between 100,000 and 150,000 people in the United States. The Russian flu in 1889 killed a million people. In 1918 to 1919, the Spanish flu killed 40 to 50 million people. People. And in 1981, when AIDS and HIV broke out, even up to the present, 25 to 35 million people have died from that. And we're looking at it today with the coronavirus, with the coronavirus. Um, we, we have we have several hundred thousands of people who are infected and tens of thousands who have died. So these things are part of life. It's not just something that's new. It's new to us because it's happening in our generation, but it's not new. It's a part of life. And, and we want you to know tonight that, that it's an infectious disease that spreads to a vast area. That's why it's called a pandemic. And, if, and it has no respect of persons. It, it, don't, it doesn't care if you're male or female. It doesn't care if you're black or white. It doesn't care if you're rich or poor. It doesn't care if you're saved or unsaved. It is a part of this world. And everybody, everybody can, is in jeopardy of getting it if you're not safe. And going back to um, our scripture for tonight in Matthew 5 and 45, Jesus says, that God allows the sun to shine on everybody, just like he allows his rain to fall on everybody, which means that some everybody can be up some days and then everybody can be down. Nobody is exempt as long as you live in this world. And see, and, and, and some things will happen to us because we live. And that, that's it. We're, it's, it's a part of life. When um, we, we study the scripture and we read about Elisha, who was one, who's that prophet that asked for a double portion of the anointing that was on Elijah's life. Elisha died from a sickness. When we read about Hezekiah, yes, we know that Hezekiah, God added 15 more years to his life, but Hezekiah became sick. So we too can get sick. And if we are not careful, we can get sick. Does that mean that we aren't spiritual? Does that mean that we're not praying? No, it means that we weren't being careful. This thing is real. I encourage you, don't fall for the hype because another all these politicians, the president and the governor is talking about reopening the, the country and the state. This thing is still here. I look at the statistics and every day the number of people infected or or confirmed cases continue to increase anywhere from 500 to 1,000 a day in the state and 20 to 30,000 30, in the country. This thing is still here. People are still dying. So we need to keep practicing social distancing. We need to keep practicing staying away from some, from crowds. I don't care if McDonald's does open up. It doesn't matter. You be safe. Take this thing seriously. And, 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 and going back and thinking about this, is it of God? No, it's not of God. Is it of the devil? 
No, it's not of the devil. And yes, yes, this sickness is just a part of this world and the things of this world and which can infect us. Also, it can cause us death. It's just a part of life. Nobody is exempt. But going back to what I said earlier, God wants to see if you will still trust him in the midst of what's going on around you. But I'm going to tell you tonight, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust him. Now, I'm not going to trust the news. I'm not going to trust the vaccines. I'm not going to trust the words of our leaders. I'm trusting God tonight. And I pray that you'll join me in trusting him. I heard Job say that even in the midst of all of his, his stuff, losing his cattle, his, his sheep, his, his donkeys and his children and, and his wife turning against them. Job said, though he slayed me, Job knew something was going on. He knew God was in control, even though God allowed Satan to do it. He still knew God was in, in control. He said, though he slay me yet, will I trust him? Can we have that kind of faith? Lord, I see all of this going on around me, people on my job and my family getting sick and dying. Can we trust you? We have to trust God. We have to have faith in God and know that God is still in control. God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. May, we, may, we hope that we have said something tonight that will, will help you, that will encourage you, that will strengthen your faith in the days to come. And I do ask um, that even, well, I do ask that we continue to, to give. Um, we are going to have somebody um, at, the, at the church on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. If you do not want to mail your, um, your contributions in, and we always advise do not mail any cash through the mail, only checks and money orders if, you, if you're going to contribute. But there will be someone at the church between 10 and 11 o'clock on Saturday morning so that you can drop off your contribution, your tithe and your offering that those who have been saving and keeping it for um, since the time we announced this, you, you will be able to drop it off. And, you know, we're not going to congregate or anything like that, just dropping it off and keep going and somebody will receive it so we can deposit and deposit checks and make sure you keep your your ledger and your register straight. And we thank all of those who have mailed in your contributions and giving into um, your deacons. And, and we just thank God for that. And we will get back on, um, on the right track in our giving, but we pray that you are blessed. We pray that you be safe and continue to trust in the Lord. God bless you. May heaven a smile upon you. And if you're mailing in, that's our address. Our address is Mispa Baptist church, PO box 1275, Baxley, Georgia, 31515. Again, that's Mispa Baptist Church, Baxley, Georgia. P.O. Box 1275, zip code 31515. Have a great afternoon. God bless you.